Uh, with that being said, I've got 11 o'clock. So we'll start our basketball preview uh, press conference today with NIU men's basketball head coach, Mark Montgomery. He's entering his 10th season here in DeKalb. Uh, last year, he guided the Huskies to a Mac West title. Uh, coach, if you want to give a little preview of your squad and then we'll start taking questions. Okay, right, hey guys, I'm excited. New season, I have a great staff. I have a very hard working and competitive team. Um, we're definitely looking to build off of last season's success. Um, it's year 10, but it's definitely gonna be very challenging with all the COVID, the testing, our travel, cancel games, played games, mass, social distancing, a regular routine we have to throw out the window, but 300 other, 350 other teams have to do the same thing. You know, a good motto that right now that we're living by is stay positive, test negative. And we have to be ready for the unexpected and then we have to accept it. Um, but you know what, there's light at the end of the tunnel for our guys that the season starts. We have a start date, November 25th against UIC. We're definitely taking it one game at a time because anything can change overnight. Um, telling our guys, we can only control what we can control in our model and our philosophy is, you know what? Let's just get better each and every day. Doesn't matter if it's on the court, off the court, class, weight room, conditioning, we can control that. Let's control it. Let's go hard. Let's keep working hard and good things that happen. Um, I know the schedule came out. We always have a very challenging schedule no matter what. I think, um, like we said, we open up with UIC on the 25th. Supposed to play SIUE December 2nd. DePaul December 3rd. Coach of Iowa on the 13th, who's in the top 10 in the country. Uh, then we have a sprinkle in a couple Mac games because that will change. And then our schedule ends with Chicago State. So hopefully we get to play all those games. If a game gets canceled, of course, we will always look into maybe adding another game or pushing an opponent back. But, you know, it's a lot of moving parts when you try to find an opponent or change a game or add a game. Um, once we get into conference play, it's a little different this year. We're playing 20 conference games um, and only the top eight teams make the conference tournament. Um, and everyone knows the, the, the Mid-American Conference men's basketball, it, it's, it's, it's good, just as good as any conference, top to bottom, very competitive, very good teams. Um, once we start playing conference games, and if you're trying to figure out the tiebreakers, just ask or call Bill Baker. He will have that for you daily. But it's my job just to concentrate on the next opponent and let Bill and uh, Jeremy Reed handle that. Um, Player-wise, um, three seniors, all with experience. Starts with Zaire Mateen. Um, very good um, floor general, three-point shooter. I think he had six last year against Eastern Michigan. So his leadership and his shooting definitely will help our team. Nathan Scott had a lot of injuries his junior year. I think he's ready to make that breakout year, have that breakout year, uh, playing the four position stretch four. Chris Johnson, more of a jack of all trades, energy guy, rebounder, defender. Our junior class is loaded. We have a lot of them with us definitely not bringing in any freshmen, but it starts with Trenton Hankerson and Darius Bean, two guys that average over seven points as sophomores that are ready to make that jump um, and be double figure players. Definitely two way guys that can defend and score. Um, junior college transfer from Odessa, uh, Tavon Jones, he's been injured. So he's a wait and see. But we also have Kingsley, we have Zool, we have Adong, and we have Anthony Crump, four guys with college experience that would definitely help our front line. We have a few fives, we have stretch fours, 
We have a three that can put the ball on the floor. So we're definitely um, excited about our junior class. They will definitely anchor uh, our team for years to come. Our sophomore class starts with Tyler Cochran, who played a lot, should have been on the all freshman team last year. He's a do it all, can rebound, defend, make plays, shoot. He will definitely have a big season. Then you have Keenan Cole, who, who adds depth. Um, Caleb Thornton, the jet quick point guard that we got from Iowa Western Community College, played high school ball with Tyler Cochran at um, Bolingbrook. Um, he's a blur. He could definitely create plays, make plays, tough, gritty guard. But then we have uh, Dan and Justin. Justin's coming off injury. Dan's another backup guard, walk on. That definitely helps scout team shooting in his basketball IQ. I know the number one question is going to be asked, you know, how do you replace Geno German first? And that's by committee. You don't replace a guy that scored 2,000 points with just one player. He started four years. He brought his leadership, his work ethic. What he did was teach those other guys, this is how you should work. This is what you're capable of doing. I think, um, you know, we play six guards. I don't know if one can average 20 points, but we can definitely do it by committee. We will definitely have more balance. As I was telling my team this past week, what Gino German did for a lot of our guys, he bailed them out. When shot clock's going down, he gets the ball at five, he gets the ball at four, and he created something. Now we need different guys to step up. Hopefully we will get a shot before that time, but I think that uh, our running game were also Gino German, he was a high ball usage guy where we can get him the ball. He can make things happen in different possessions. I think our ball movement, player movement, more unselfishness is going to create balance, but also opportunity for other guys on this team. Lacey James, Noah McCarty anchored our four and five position. Solid and nails on defense, very, very reliable. I think the dog, Zul Quef. Uh, Chinadu, those guys who goes by Kingsley, those guys will anchor our front line. Nathan Scott, Keenan Cole, Justin Lee. So by committee, we will be a very, very balanced and solid and tough-nosed team. Um, whenever you talk about an NIU men's basketball team, it always starts on the defensive end. You play defense, you, re you rebound, we will definitely be in every game. If you, went on, if you went at home, you went on the road, you have to defend and rebound. Our motto will not change. We will always get shots. We always find ways to score. But our mentality is get stops on defense, good things that happen on offense. You have to trust the system. You have to trust the coaches. You have to trust each other. But after coming off two successful seasons, 17 and 18 wins, it's been built we're built to last. This team is going to sustain. We will find a way to compete and win games like we have in the past. Now, of course, we're looking to take the next step. It got taken away from us last year. We finally got a first round bye. We were ready to win the tournament, just like probably eight other teams. I felt we had one of the best players and best teams that can do it. Hopefully this year we'll get to finish it off in Cleveland and then go to postseason play. Love to open up for questions. Again, as a reminder, if you have questions for Coach Montgomery, please raise your hand or type raise hand in the chat and we'll get to you. So we'll start with WIFR TV in Rockford. I believe that's you, Joe Olmo. Yeah, that's me. How's it going? Hey coach, um, you know, you kind of you talked about Eugene there for you know in your opening statement, but obviously, um, you're also coming into is you know where the preseason uh, poll just came out for the MAC. You rank you know you're you're picked tenth in the in the league, and you mentioned eight teams are going to be going to. There's no West, there's no East. So just how are you going to be able to find those wins in conference to kind of show the doubters, prove the doubters wrong? Well, it seems like we're always picked um, towards the bottom. You know, uh, last year I don't think we were picked in the top four. We finished in the top four and we won the league. Uh, listen to Michael Huger at Bowling Green. He said two years ago, they were picked 12th. Uh, they finished at the top of the league. You know, Akron last year wasn't picked in the top uh, three or four. They found a way to win the league. You know what? 
you defend, you rebound, uh, you take care of the ball, you do things that your staples are built on, your good practice habits, um, you trust your teammates, you trust the coaches, good things that happen. Um, I never go on what uh, other coaches in this league say because everyone votes for their friends and they think their team's going to be good, just like I think my team will be uh, a very good. But uh, it doesn't matter if it's a preseason magazine, if it's Blue Ribbon, you know what? Uh, I think we can, uh, uh, our mentality, um, we can play against anybody in this conference. We hold our own. In MAC play, every game, it seemed like with us, other than two last year, was decided by less than five points. Give me that any day of the week, Monday through Sunday. I love those odds. Let us finish games. Let us make free throws. We'll be where we should be at the end of the year. And uh, I like our chances. And then uh, my next question, um, you know, we've gotten a chance to see NIU football, uh, let, you know, these first three weeks or so. Um, have you been able to kind of keep up with them on how they've been able to handle the COVID situation as far as protocols? Uh, they went on the road for the first time this week. Are you guys implementing similar protocols? How is, how is the, the team, the Ben's basketball team going to handle the COVID situation? Well, health and safety is number one. We've been doing protocols from this summer, just like men's football in every sport around here we're doing with the doctors, the trainers say. And uh, yeah, I follow a football, the bigger, the, the bigger, you know, they have 85 guys, you know, we only have 15. Our numbers are a lot different. Um, I'm glad that we didn't have to postpone and wait. And, you know, they play that waiting game. You know, are we gonna have a season? Then they don't have a season. Then they bring back the season. Men's basketball has always been on. Uh, what we have to uh, overcome a little bit is our daily routine. And it started from the summer. We usually bring our guys back June 15th. We got it up and running eight weeks. We didn't get those eight weeks. You know, you had individual workouts longer. We have had some shutdown. We had a school shutdown, a team shutdown. But you know what? We just have to find our way. Um, if the doctors say, hey, we have to do a 14-day pause or we have to do the contract tracing or if a player has to sit out and then when he comes back, it's more than 14 days. People really don't know that because when you come back, you're 50% 70%, 90%. So really you can't come back and play if it's a game until the 19th days. We went over all this with our student athlete. They're safe and healthy and health is the number one priority over a game. They're gonna get their year back of eligibility. So it's not a, a year that let's, we're, we're trying to win just like everyone else, but safe and you know, safety and health is the number one concern. And if we have to shut down, we shut down. When we come back, we get our guys to play. That's all we can do. Thanks, Coach. All right, next, Brandon Suarez from the Huskies on Tap podcast. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm great, Brian. Brandon, I'm sorry. You're good, you're good. Uh, real quick, what was the most difficult part for you in preparing for this season? Obviously, the uh, last season ended with a lot of question marks and it carried over into this season. Whether it was recruiting or preparing the team you currently have, what was the hardest part for this season? Well, starting in the spring that, um, you know, I'm, not, I'm one of those coaches that goes, you know, gets out, goes to the gym, um, watches individual workouts, watch open gym, study film. But also I like to, you know, when you recruit, you want a face-to-face -face conversation. I like to read body language. I want to see what the coaches are saying. I want to read their body language. So you take all that away. Now you have to recruit on the internet and you have to trust uh, your staff, you have to trust other staffs. So that was a challenge. You know, it's a challenge when you do get a player and then the first time you meet him is when he gets to campus and you haven't met his family and, and that whole situation. But, you know, we worked through it um, in the fall. It's been challenging because, you know, this is year 10, you build a routine. You know, you only get better each and every year. I've built a pretty good routine that has helped us become pretty successful, but that changed. So then we had to change a little bit, you know, um, where it was a little more individual workouts. It was a little more at times we had to Zoom or we had to Skype more or you had to do more things like we're doing now. Um, you know, the toughest thing is you need at least five to implement your defense, to you know, to, to implement a this is how you run this play. This is the timing of this play. So the toughest thing to answer your question, Brandon, is to stop 
and start. Because once our guys get into a routine and they get their conditioning and they're going, then you have to stop. Well, in sports, you just can't start back up the next day after you sat for three, four, five, seven days, 14 days and think you're back at, you know, you're back at square one. It takes time to get your conditioning, it takes time to get your, um, your legs back underneath you, your timing, those things take time. But what also, what it affects is some guy's confidence. So you gotta build confidence back up and uh, tell the guys to be patient. But you know, they look at the calendar just like we look at the calendar. They know games are coming. But um, you know, we're just trying to stay the course, build our guys up, stay positive, keep pushing them. And the old staple is, hey, you gotta work hard, continue to work hard because there will be games. And that's how we're keeping the spirits up. That's the perfect mindset to have. And to kind of follow that up, we've seen in this year and other sports, uh, even basketball as well, the amount of injuries. And then obviously you have to deal with uh, COVID every week. How important is it to have depth and to make sure that every single player one through 15 is ready when their number is called? You know, we talked about that earlier. Um, We've always had depth there. It's great when you're, when you have two at each position. So we're kind of at three at each position almost because we have uh, six guards. So we're too deep there. Our bigs, we have seven. We have a little more flexibility, but uh, you know, we had to get creative because all of a sudden when you contact trace and three of the guards living together, it wipes all out three of them. And now you only have three left. So we had to move some, some housing. We had to get smart in that change some roommates because we want to play games. You need at least, you need eight, but really this year you need your 13 to your 15. We have a couple guys banged up. So right right now when you're at 13 scholarships, you're down to 11. You need 10 to practice, but it's only so much five on five you can do. So we're trying to be smart, but also our guys are sacrificing um, because it's a daily routine is, you know, you lift weights and now we do the, um, the antigen testing three to four times a week. So that test could be at 7.30, it could be 11, you know, just like, hey, then it's at eight o'clock one day, you gotta build that in, you have to build your conditioning in, you have to build your practices. And then when you go through a 14 day pause, now we're we're playing catch up a little bit. We, for the last two weeks, we've been playing. And at the same time, you know, they're dealing with academics and it's, it's, it's online and a lot of guys aren't used to that. So it's a lot of new things that they're getting used to, but they are sacrificing and uh, they're getting themselves prepared, which is good. And then one final question, more of a motivation question. I know you talked about you don't pay too much mind to the coaches poll or even the media uh, before the season, but is it a little bit more motivation for yourself and your team knowing that you guys are always counted out like this, even though you're going into your 10th season? I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, I talk about it just like you guys talk about it. I use that as motivation. I did it yesterday because we had the uh, the Mac coaches show and uh, the Zoom call. And you know what? You got to earn your respect. Best way to earn it, you play 40 minutes on the floor. And we're going to get our chance to play 40 minutes against everyone that was picked ahead of us and picked behind us. And, you know, we're going to will our way like we always do. And uh, then guys and this team and this university will get more respect. But, you know, we're the only, tell them, we're we're the only school in Illinois. For some reason, the, the Michigan guys hang together and the Ohio guys hang together. And so us Ball State and Buffalo, we're the outliers and, you know, we're going to prove some people wrong. Thanks, Coach. All right. Any other questions for Coach Montgomery? Back to Joe Olmo for one more question. Um, Coach, you kind of uh, just this year, obviously, we're not going to have any fans at the Convo Center. Um, you know, we've seen what football has done with kind of piping in the, the noise. 
you know, basketball games don't get a ton of fans at these games, you know, maybe a couple hundred here, but it does make a difference. We've seen it in a few of these games last couple of years. Just how different is that going to be not having the same kind of crowd noise and, and kind of having to bring that kind of energy this year? But we always try to bring our energy, but, um, you know, not having the band, not having the cheerleaders, not having courtside, you know, we do get fans here. And I know fans, especially on the road, it motivates the guys. Um, but, you know, everyone's going to have to adjust to it. Um, our marketing crew is going to have to do a great job of um, doing it with music. Um, but you know what? We don't practice with fans. So we're going to just be like NBA bubble. Our guys are going to be up. We're going to space those seats out. We're going to bring our own energy. Everyone knows my motto anyway is energy and effort. So, you know, I like guys that, you know what, they're saying we're not very skilled, but you know what, you can win games without skill as long as you have great energy, great effort, and a passion, and we're going to play together. It's going to be different, um, but in years past, when we had closed scrimmages, um, guys are out there competing. You know, you look at all the NFL, you know, it's not many fans there, and those guys are still making plays. So these guys are playing the game that they love, and uh, you don't need fans around when you're practicing. Uh, games are still going to be streamed. We're going to be on ESPN three. You know, hopefully we have a couple CBS games or ESPN games. So we're going to be ready to play. Fans and no fans. Hopefully by uh, uh, hopefully by January we get some fans in the building because they're the season ticket holders. They have sacrificed. They have paid money. We want them to be able to see the product that they um, support. They give to this university. They give to our athletic department. We love to give back, and that's a way of giving back that um, we get fans in here, and they deserve to see our guys. All right. Thank you, Coach Montgomery. We'll bring in uh, the two student athletes now. Okay, great. All right, for sure. What's going on? What's going on? How are you guys doing today? All right, so we have Trendon Hankerson here, junior for NIU men's basketball. Uh, if you have questions for Trendon, be sure to raise your hand in the chat and we'll get to you. And we'll start with uh, Brandon Suarez from Huskies on Tap. Hey, Trendon, how are you today, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Uh, you're now one of the veterans on this team. What would you say this team needs from you uh, to win basketball games as your role may differ from last season? Um, well, my role is a lot different from last year's team. Um, last year, I was more of a role player, um, off the ball kind of guy, obviously, because we had Geno German. But this year, my role is a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to need to score the ball a little bit more um, for this team and just be a leader make sure I'm pointing guys in the right direction and stuff like that. So um, that way we're looking um, the best we can when we're on the court. We look coordinated and we have chemistry and stuff like that. So just bringing that leadership role to this year's team to um, make sure that we can win as many games as we can with the stuff that's going on. And then obviously this is probably the most unprecedented year that we've all had to deal with, whether it's covering sports or playing sports. What was the way, or how were you able to uh, stay in basketball shape and even sometimes get to gyms as gym access was closed during uh, certain points of the quarantine? Um, well, it's real tough staying in the gym, um, especially when we have to quarantine and stuff like that. But um, just using your outside sources, uh, we have a lot of guys that are from the state of Illinois and they have a lot of sources, a lot of gyms around the area that we can get into. Uh, especially when we're quarantined. But the most important thing is staying healthy as a team in general so that way we don't have to quarantine, you know? <clears throat> like, that's our main focus right now. Thanks, Trenton. And right, next up, Eddie Carifio from the Daily Chronicle. Hey, Trenton. Uh, I know there is a lot of uh, talk. You mentioned it, you know, obviously the role Gino had and how everyone's going to um, fill in to, to, to replace that. I was wondering... Come crunch time, I mean, obviously, Gino was the one getting the ball last year. Who's got that attitude? Who's got that uh, 
you know, I guess, instinct that you see taking over that role in those situations this year? Um, I, I would say myself. Um, I would put myself out there uh, as that role to, to take the last shot just because um, the percentages and, like, some of the stuff that I achieved last year. Um, however, we do have multiple guys on the team who can take that last shot. Uh, we have – guys all over depending on what we need a two or three uh, a post up it just depends on what we're looking for really but um <clears throat> with the ball um in my hands I, I feel like we're best at the end of the game what's it like for you i guess adjusting to that role and being uh wanting to be that guy this year um it's different for sure uh it's a lot different from high school i would say just because it's, it's almost like a restart because you have to go through your freshman and your sophomore year again but um i, I almost feel like i'm back um, because I'm back to playing the role that I'm used to playing um, as like the team leader doing things like that, pointing guys in the right direction. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, next, Joe Olmo, WIFR Rockford. All right. Um, you know, Coach kind of talked about it there uh, before you, just about not getting that opportunity at the MAC tournament last year. Uh, how difficult was that to have, you know, get that opportunity and then see if, you know, just go away like that? Um, and then obviously this year being picked 10th, what, what do you say about the preseason poll? Um, well, it was really tough last year um, having that taken away from us because I thought that was one of the better teams that we had here. Um, just outside of our record, um, we had a lot of grit as a team and we worked very hard to achieve what we achieved. Um, and to see it all taken away from not only me, but from our seniors as well was, was really tough. Um, and then coming into this year with the standings that they have us as coming in 10th or whatever it is, um, uh, we're not really concerned about that. We are just trying to build off of what we did last year and we're trying to do better than what we did last year, obviously with the co-tie, we're trying to win it outright this year. Um, but as far as the standings go, we're not focused on that. We're just working every day, trying to get better. Um, <clears throat> so that way we can win as many games as we can this year. And when you look at uh, what football has done, you know, and, you know, student athletes are, are pretty tight as far as different sports and whatnot. So uh, have you talked to any of the guys on what uh, football has had to deal with, or I know you're focused on your season, but just how they, they've had to handle the COVID situations, just preparing mentally, physically for what may happen? Yeah, um, I have talked to some of the guys on the football team. I, um, I associate with some of the guys on the team. They definitely said that it's tough. It's a lot tougher um, just with things not being um, so fluid this year in terms of having a schedule, like a defined schedule where um, we can do things whenever we need to do them. Um, with the COVID and stuff going on, they definitely said that like practice time switching around and a lot of things switching around is definitely tougher for them. But I mean, it's expected, the adversity is expected um, and we're looking to go at it instead and challenge it instead of um, sitting back and waiting for it. How do you feel like the, uh, the, the college has done getting you guys, keeping you guys safe and, you know, getting you prepared as well? Um, I think they've done a great job here just because uh, we get tested fairly regularly, um, bi-weekly, and we've been doing that since we first got here, really. Um, but as far as keeping us safe, uh, it's it's kind of tough just because you kind of have to stay within your own restraints and stuff like that. And just making sure that you and your roommates, like your living roommates, are staying safe, not doing things like going out and being reckless and stuff like that. So it's tough for sure. But um, at the end of the day, we all got to hold each other accountable. Right. Thanks. All right. Any other questions for Trendon? Okay. Thank you, Trendon. Appreciate it. Now bring in Tyler Cochran. Hello, Tyler. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, so questions for sophomore Tyler Cochran. We'll start with Eddie Carippio from the Daily Chronicle. Hey, Tyler. I was just uh, just kind of overall, how do you say you guys are looking this year? Uh, say that again? Oh, overall, how do you say you guys are kind of looking this year? Uh, we're looking pretty good. You know, we're taking it uh, day by day. You know, guys coming in every day, getting better. Everybody coming in, ready to work. So 
I feel like it's going to be a really good year this year. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, Brandon Suarez, Huskies on tap. Hey, Tyler, how are you today, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. So I kind of was trending this similar question. Assuming you take on a bigger role this season, what can Huskies fans expect from you this year? Um, more leadership, you know, um, just another body out there playing hard, doing it takes for a uh, team to be successful. You know, everybody, I like the groups that we have because everybody coming in and just ready to work. So I feel like you're big you. Then this is more of a COVID question. Have you ever played in an empty arena? It's a two-part one. And then how can we expect the players on this team to bring their own energy with no fans or even, like they said, cheerleaders or band in the stands? Honestly, I have never played in a fully empty arena. Maybe AU games on the road at 7 a.m. on a Sunday where there's not that many people. But other than that, no. Man, coming from a, everybody bringing their own energy, everybody should be doing that regardless if there's fans or not. You know, we credit our energy from a team standpoint. But I think we that question we have to see because I don't think anybody's ever played in an empty arena. So thank you. Joe Olmo? Um, you know, it's been talked about many times now, just, you know, Gino leaving the program now. Uh, you know, how are you guys going to be able to find ways to score the basketball and knowing that German's not on the court with you guys this year? Uh, I honestly feel comfortable with everybody out there being able to score about. There's things that he did that were just unbelievable. But if everybody just really plays their role and comes in with having the confidence, to knowing they have the ability to step on the floor and score the basketball, I think we'll be okay. And for this group, uh, you know, getting picked 10th, you know, it's coach talked about it. Uh, Hankerson talked about it. Just can't really look at the uh, preseason rankings too much, but what does it mean to kind of be overlooked again this year? Uh, no matter who's ranked first, second, or third, we're going to come with the same mentality, ready to work. And then we, now that we picked 10th, they're just coming as the underdogs work 10 times harder. You know, prove everybody wrong, prove to ourselves that we belong in the top. Yeah, thanks. All right, any other questions for Tyler Cochran? All right, Brandon, you have one more question. We've talked a lot about we've talked a lot about Gino here in this uh, this press conference. I want to ask you, as one of the younger players that was more of a sponge off him, how did Gino help you become a better player last year, and how did he help some of the other players on this team in that aspect? Um, really, just became a better player because watching him do unbelievable things it just made me realize, like, dang, one day I wouldn't be able to do that. And with his scoring ability, it made us want to dig deep and help him out. You know, he was a senior, this was his last opportunity. So it made everybody just want to come in together and, you know, help him out as well as Lacey and Noah as being the seniors, so. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tyler. Right. Appreciate you guys. Um, again, for, if you guys want to reach out for other members of NIU men's basketball team, you can reach out to Jeremy Reed as we now get ready to Move over to NIU women's basketball. And bring in sixth year head coach, Lisa Carlson. Hello, everybody. Hello, coach. How are you? Hi there. Um, let's start with you previewing a new look Huskies, a bunch of newcomers this year, a lot of uh, you know, younger faces on this team. Um, so if you could give us a little bit preview for this year's squad and then we'll start taking questions. Great. Um, you know, let me just start by taking the opportunity to uh, say good morning to everybody. And it's always fun to talk a little Husky women's basketball. Um, I also want to take the chance to, to really thank Sean and Deborah for um, the opportunity that they have given me to lead this program. And, and also thanks to their leadership and guidance through what's been for sure a crazy year so far. Um, in year six, for me, this has probably been the biggest turnover in roster since I've been here uh, with the graduation of five seniors and five very prominent seniors who've kind of been the face 
of the program for the last few years. Um, but a lot of new faces uh, and also loaded with young talent is really what this roster roster's makeup is uh, is made of. Um, it's been, a, to this point, a really fun group to coach. Um, and they have a, a chance to really leave their mark, I think, as Huskies. You know, young rosters grow and develop so fast. And, and this is an eager bunch of, ro of youngsters. So that's really exciting. Um, you know, I'll always assess our program in three different areas when it comes to competitive success. Uh, first, you have to look at your talent. And, and this group is talented enough, I think, to win any game we play. I think then you have to look at your culture. And um, I, I think that's the one thing that we really pride ourselves in as a staff. Um, and I think the program and the institution would say the same thing. This is a culture of great character, young women um, to represent us in, in every facet of, of what they do. And then the other one is, is game planning. And, and my staff is talented enough to put us in position to win. You know, with all of my assistants returning, I think we're a much stronger unit there as well. Um, and that staff looks, uh, again, I just want to kind of mention their names. My associate head coach, Adam Candes, is in his fifth year with me. Um, you know, he's involved in all facets of our program. He'll run our offense this year. Um, Alexis Lawrence begins her second year with us. Uh, Lex will work primarily with our guards. And then her and Jane Stewart are our defensive coordinators. Um, and then Jane works primarily with our post players. Uh, Quinn Rear is back as our director of operations. And in my opinion, there's no better Dobo in the country. And yeah, a few who have worked with her um, probably could say that. And then we're very fortunate to have some familiar, some familiar, some familiarity in our graduate assistant positions. Um, Corey Johnson's been part of our program for the last three years. First as a practice player, then as an undergrad manager, and now as a graduate assistant. Um, and Allie Lehman returns to DeKalb following her military commitment. And we all remember Allie during her stellar career in a Husky uniform and now as a graduate coaching position for our program. I'm really looking forward to working with Allie in that new role. Um, the off season has definitely been something none of us ever imagined. You know, not being around our players after the season last spring for about four months was, was extremely challenging. Um, and managing that return to campus this summer and fall has also had its challenges as well, but I'm really thankful for our athletic training staff, our medical team, and our leadership for helping our players get back to campus in as safe a manner as possible. Um, coming off a year where I felt like we uh, underachieved, you know, all of the challenges we face have made us not take anything for granted and cherish all the opportunities that we have just to play the game. And because of that, I think this roster is prepared for what's around the corner. Um, even though new faces and big shoes to fill, uh, I really like the chemistry and makeup of this team. Um, offensively, I think, you know, we're gonna be able to get back to really opening things up and, and likely on a game to game basis, have four to five players, I think in double figures. Uh, we'll push pace at all times, just like always. But I believe that this group will be better again at sharing the basketball. So scoring quickly and often, again, at all five positions um, puts us in a good position offensively. And then defensively, we continue to grow. And a year of experience, especially for our returners, even though they're young, has really shown great improvement um, on the defensive end. So when you look at our roster, uh, we have three seniors, Riley Blackwell, who has been a staple in our lineup each year since she's been here. You know, Riley's right place, right time, long, athletic, skilled, um, and she can do a multitude of different things. Um, Paulina Castro is back for her uh, red shirt senior year. Um, you know, Paulina has been plagued by injury uh, for a lot of her career, but right now is probably as healthy as she's ever been, which is awesome. She's also one of our team captains, uh, one of our most vocal leaders, in, and has really been shooting the basketball well early in practice. So excited to see her back on the floor. Um, Rachel Dumlin is a senior. Now, after being a walk-on junior college transfer from Elgin last year, where she had a, a great career, she, come, she came in as a walk-on and in the offseason earned a much-deserved scholarship for her last year competition. So, uh, you know, Rachel does so many things for us in practice, just can't be thankful enough for her. Um, our junior class is, is really led by Erin Hodges, who returned from a knee injury last year. Uh, she's a difference maker in all facets of the game for us. You know, an explosive slasher, a long defender, uh, a tenacious rebounder. 
Um, so we're excited to get Aaron back on the floor. Um, John A. Poison is also back and is regaining a lot of the confidence that she confidence that she had as a freshman. You know, she's really can be a volume scorer and, and definitely a great competitor. Um, Michaela Brandon has also made great strides and will likely see herself in the rotation uh, as long as she stays healthy. Uh, probably our best rebounding uh, player on the roster. And then we have a junior college uh, forward that, that comes to us from Parkland, Emily Miner. Uh, really athletic, can run, rebound, uh, stretch the defense because she has three-point range and gives us great depth at the forward position. So that kind of rounds out our junior class. Um, our sophomore class is probably the most dynamic. Um, Grace Hunter uh, started 13 games for us last year as a true freshman. And Grace is also a captain um, and will take on a much bigger role this year, obviously, on the court. Shelby Coker will fill uh, a lion's share of the minutes at the point guard position. Um, she was our third leading scorer last year as a true freshman. And the work that she's put in in the offseason will put her in position to not only lead our team, but in my opinion, be one of the best guards in the MAC. I know that's a bold statement, uh, but I truly believe it. Shelby's really a, an independent worker, and, and she looks great right now. Um, Asia Davis, a post player from right here in DeKalb, she played 28 games for us last year as well as a true freshman and actually started four of them. Uh, played an increased role as the season went on and, and just continued to get better and better in leaps and bounds. She had a game against Ohio where she had 17 rebounds, um, and that's a really big number. Uh, she too will be the focal point for us, especially as far as the presence in the paint. And then we also have a transfer guard from Long Beach State in Alexis Legan. Uh, a very good score, especially as a jump shooter, which is not something you always see. Um, and she adds great depth to the guard spot. We have three freshmen. Um, our tallest player on the roster is Brooke Stonebracker from uh, Versailles, Ohio. And she is a 6'3 lefty. Um, her mom actually played at Bowling Green. And, and Brooke has got a great ceiling. Just the improvements that we've seen from her since she's been on campus have been remarkable. Sydney McRae is a 5'10 lefty guard from Cedar Rapids. Um, really high IQ player, um, great catch and shoot three point, three point shooter. Uh, and again, somebody who is just almost always does the right thing in understanding the game. And then our last freshman is Jaden Maribo from, Mol from Bolingbrook, uh, a point guard with great handles, great quickness, um, can score at all three levels. Again, as she continues to get more and more confident on what it takes to play at this level, I think her career here is going to be outstanding. Um, you know, I think Monty mentioned this, this roster could in fact be intact for the next two seasons as well with the NCAA granting um, winter sport athletes an additional, an additional year of eligibility. So uh, it, it's exciting that we will have a chance to work with this group for, for quite some time um, because I do think they're really talented. Um, a little bit about our schedule. Um, the first chance to see us play will be next Wednesday. Um, we, we've had to change opponents a little bit. so. I'll, I'll wait on who that will be, but likely we will still play a one o'clock game at home on November 25th. And then we will head to the Compass Challenge at Eastern Illinois, um, who's hosting it this year. So that's always exciting. We'll play Eastern actually first and then uh, Western and Southern are there as well. And then we round out our non-conference play with trips to Bradley and trips to Michigan State. Um, league wise, um, and I feel like I say this every year, you know, the Mac should be as competitive as ever. You have a few teams at the top that are, are really scary on paper. Um, Central and Ohio return a bulk of their roster from uh, their teams last year that had great success. And, and those two teams especially are picked at the top of the league. But I really do think that we could surprise some people. You know, we, um, so only eight teams are going to Cleveland this year. The top eight will advance. Um, and I think once those eight teams get to Cleveland, then you get there and you're doing what you can to make a run. So. We'll use the off season or we'll use the non-conference games to really kind of get a feel for rotations. Obviously, we want to keep everybody healthy and we want everyone to be ready in preparation for what those 20 MAC games are going to be like um, to get ourselves to Cleveland. So again, I thank everybody for being here and, and all the continued support. Uh, I know it's it's been crazy, um, but I think it'll be a fun winter in the combo for sure. So uh, with that, I can open it up for questions. All right, uh, we'll start with Eddie Criffio from the Daily Chronicle. Hey, Coach. Um, hey. I was just 
You mentioned Asia uh, when you were talking and, and the role you expect her to have, but expanding on that a little bit, you know, what is it you like the, that you've seen in her development from last year to this? And you also mentioned another 6-3 player. So is that going to kind of affect her minutes or her, her time at all? Well, I'll start with Asia. You know, obviously we saw glimpses, especially towards the end of the season last year, of how how dominant she can be in the in the bottom half of the lane. And I think the biggest difference for her this year is that she – has a much better understanding of what it takes to compete at this level and really what it takes to compete in this league because she played a lot in MAC games. So I see her confidence grow day to day and definitely her confidence confidence from the game minutes she got last year. And she also knows that, that we're relying on her to be a real factor for us in the bottom half of the lane. So, um, and she's willing to take on that challenge. So uh, again, there, she will not play like a sophomore. She will play like a veteran. And that, that's really exciting. Um, so Brooke is 6'3". And again, she's, she's a, a work in progress a little bit, but, it, but she's been um, really fun to watch kind of blossom a little bit in the first few months that she's been here. Um, and she, she gets an opportunity to really be challenged every day by Asia, which is great as well. Hey, thanks. Uh, just a reminder, if you have questions for Coach, uh, please type raise your hand in the chat. We'll get to you. So next up will be Joe Olmo from WIFR in Rockford. Hey, Coach. Um, you mentioned it there uh, that Wednesday's game against Illinois State was canceled. Um, just already one game into this, not even a game into the season, we're already seeing the COVID, uh, you know, concerns as it is. Just what are your concerns about the season going into it uh, with obviously the health concerns there as well? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we all knew that there was going to be situations this year that, that were going to present themselves that we just have to be adaptable and versatile as much as we can. And, you know, it, it happened right away. You know, we were, very much looking forward to next Wednesday's game against Illinois State. Unfortunately, um, you know, that opponent is not going to happen. But because so many people are, are going to be in the same boat in a lot of ways, you know, we will continue to try and find uh, opponents to play, again, to help us prepare for what we're going to see in league play. And speaking of league play, you guys moved up your game to against Ohio from the, the 30th to the 16th. Is that, was there any reason for that? Or is that just kind of scheduling worked out better that way? You know, I think a lot of it, it, it makes a lot of sense to try and play that game before the holiday as opposed to after the holiday. Um, I think we all know that there's, uh, people are anticipating that, that that could be difficult as far as uh, the virus is concerned uh, with the holidays looming um, and also some changes in, in really uh, testing protocols when everyone come back, comes back to campus. So it just made a lot of sense to try and play that one early. You know, I think the MAC continues to look at opportunities to um, play, put ourselves in position to, to get as many MAC games in as we can. And so it just made sense to move that one. And, you know, what it looks like on opportunities to play MAC games before the holiday, even more than that one, I think that's, that's an ever-changing and fluid situation. And uh, lastly, uh, you mentioned Michigan State coming up as well. Uh, how important is it to play these kind of bigger opponents to get yourself ready for uh, a run through the MAC and, and obviously into the tournament as well? Yeah, I think, you know, we try and do that every year for a lot of different reasons. But for our players to have an opportunity to really kind of um, challenge themselves against the best in the country uh, at that Power 5 level, I think, it's exciting. Uh, we have players from the area that uh, are very familiar with uh, all of the Big Ten opponents. And so us having an opportunity to, to lace them up and step on the floor against, um, you know, the big boys, like I like to say, then then I think that's a great a great chance to really um, kind of put us on a measuring stick on on where we are and where we need to be. Uh, so we, we always look forward to all games, but we definitely look forward to those opportunities to play. Um, power five schools in our non-conference schedule. Uh, and if nobody else has any, you know, another question real quick, I'll just mention, um, you're not playing in front of fans this year at the convo, just how different is that going to be to kind of bring that energy to kind of get the girls ready to play uh, week in and week out, night in and night out? Well, we're for sure going to miss our fans. You know, we have a loyal uh, group that um, 
you know, it kind of makes me sad that we won't get to see them face to face for a while. But from a competitive standpoint, and I, and I think, you know, Tyler mentioned this, Monty mentioned this, I, I think it's as a, as a competitor, you should not be motivated by who's in the stands. You know, our preparation doesn't change. Um, and I think this group is so anxious to get on the court to play that we'll be able to handle what that's like on game day when the stands are empty. Um, it's not something that we want. It's not something we hope lasts very long. But the reality is it, it is the way it is right now. But I think the chance to compete and the chance to play way outweighs the fact that for a while, people will just have to watch it on TV. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, any other questions for Coach Carlson? Now I'll ask one more if anybody doesn't have one. <laughs> okay, Joe, go ahead. Um, you you mentioned you lose Courtney Woods, you lose Maya Starks, that senior class. Uh, what did that senior class mean to you, this program? You kind of mentioned in your opening monologue there. Just what do that? What do they mean to? you know, kind of getting this program to be in that upper echelon of the MAC. Well, that group has um, both statistically and culturally uh, really been important to this program ever since I got here. You know, Courtney was a freshman the first year I was here and what she was able to do in the five years that she was here is remarkable and will continue to live in the history books for quite some time. You know, somebody who scored over 2,000 points and is now you know, a professional player and, and really kind of put us a little bit back on the map. I think that's obviously a, a huge tribute to her. Um, and then Maya, you know, kind of being at the helm from a point guard position for three years and establishing what that's like. Um, and their leadership was, was wonderful and, and hard workers and uh, high standard and high character individuals. So uh, like I say, you mentioned Maya, you mentioned Courtney, but really, um, you know, Abby, Allie, uh, Nini, and then, you know, the, the couple years before that, those those guys were, were a huge part of the foundation that we feel is really strong right now. And, and that doesn't go overlooked uh, almost daily. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, Coach Carlson. Um, we'll now bring in our student athletes, starting with sophomore guard Shelby Coker. Hello. Again, if you have questions for Shelby, make sure you raise your hand in the chat. We will get to you. And we'll start with Joe Olmo from WFR in Rockford. You're going to get used to me asking a lot of questions with these Zooms. Don't worry. Um, just this year, uh, preparing for this season, Shelby, what has it been like, uh, you know, with the quarantine, with the COVID, just kind of different from years past, obviously. But just for you, what has it been like to kind of prepare for another season? Uh, it was definitely challenging due to, like, the normal ways that we would normally put in work to prepare for the season, you know, like gyms closing. It was definitely a challenge to be creative, to find other ways to continue preparing for the upcoming season. So that was definitely challenging, but it definitely was, it forced me to be creative in other ways, like going back to shooting outside um, at the park to get up shots, like finding other ways to continue to prepare. And we all love the double rims at those parks. So did that really yeah. help you kind of, does, did that really honestly help your shot though, being outside and, and playing in, on those kind of courts? Um, It definitely made it harder to <laughs> not just judging with like the extra space behind the backboard, but um, it definitely made me put a little bit more arc on the ball for sure. And, you know, this year we're going to not have any fans at the convo, uh, even on the road. Just, uh, what's the, the kind of mentality going to be going into these games where it, you really do have to bring your own energy? Um, I think it's going to be kind of like we're, we do it every day in practice. We're practicing in an empty arena. So I think that's like a good way to prepare ourselves and bringing energy every day to practice, you know, we're going to have to bring that same energy to games, especially when there's no fans. And I think our team is very willing to bring that energy, especially on the bench, 
people who are starting, it doesn't matter. Just, you know, bringing that energy to keep it up even when there's no one in the stands. All right, thanks. Andy Garcia. Shelby, do you see this as your team now to lead that you've seen the seniors lead that this is your time? You're going to step up. You're going to score more that this is your team. Um, I definitely am ready to take a bigger step into the leadership role of this team. And I've definitely put in a lot of work to be able to do that. So um, if that's what this team needs, I'm definitely willing to do it. Thank you. Uh, Jay Taft, Rockford Register Star. Hey, Shelby. Um, I'm just curious. I know you guys have, like you said, you've been getting creative here, um, but you're probably going to have to kind of do that all season. What is it like being, having to be able to adjust, especially with like your season opener already? Um, is, is that hard, especially with it being your first game and with all the hype you guys have inside getting ready for that? And now you're going to have to wait longer. What's that like? Um, it definitely is a little weird. You know, we're looking forward to our first game, but um, I didn't find out that much, that long ago that our game is canceled. So kind of still processing that. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm still processing processing that but I think I coach just said that we're still looking to play on the same day so I think we'll just have to shift our minds to like who's our next opponent and but it does regardless of who we play I think we're still gonna attack the game the same way and it's just that kind of year you just kind of have to be ready for that kind of stuff right mm -hmm. good thanks Shelby all right any other questions for Shelby Coker Seeing none, thank you, Shelby. We'll now bring in senior Riley Blackwell. Hello, Riley. Hello. Uh, again, if you have questions for Riley, be sure to type raise hand in the chat, or raise your hand, we'll get to you. Uh, we'll start with Andy Garcia. Riley, you hear me? You hear me okay? Yeah. Riley, just talk about, you know, you've had the seniors leave, but offensively, we know coach wants to go up and down and score points. Do you see it more wide open? Do you see it with more shooters on the field or on the court? And uh, and where you see your role in scoring this year? Um, For me personally, my role, I'm just going to do whatever I feel that my team needs. Um, I think we have a lot of offensive threats this year. So um, I think we have shown early in practice that we are doing a really good job of finding whoever on the court has a hot hand and whoever's open and we're just um being really unselfish and finding our teammates when uh, they have an opportunity all right uh next we'll go to joe olmo Hey, Riley, uh, you know, coach talked about it uh, a little bit there, just the, the senior class going out before you. Uh, it was a, a pretty big scoring class in general. Uh, just what, what did they teach you to kind of get you ready to step into that new role uh, for you? Um, I think just like their work ethic, um, just their just them not um, being OK with being like mediocre just shows um, everyone below them what it takes to to have success at this level. Like Courtney, for example, um, she was just a great role model to see like she put in the work and because of that, she saw great success. So just being below her and seeing um, that hard work pays off is great for young players. And if I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think coach mentioned that you've had some injury problems in the past, is that right? Um, no, I've. I've been pretty healthy. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and just so for this year, you know, uh, getting ready for the season, just the, the COVID, uh, how have you been able to mentally prepare for a season where, you know, things are going to have to adjust on the fly? Um, just having the opportunity. Um, I mean, I, I know a bunch of other sports, like all the spring sports last year got canceled. So just knowing that's my senior year, 
and any opportunity to play is a blessing really. So just um, taking it one day at a time and just enjoying it while I can. Cool, thanks. Jay Taft, Rockford Register Star. Mm, hi Riley, um, it's such a weird kind of situation that we're all in. What, what do you think is gonna be the key um, to not only getting through a season like this, but being successful and, and winning through a season like this, um, even starting with not knowing maybe who you're going to play in your season opener in just days, how, do, how mentally, how do you, what's going to be the key to, to success this year? Um, I would say just not looking too much in the future. Um, kind of like I said earlier, just take it one day at a time. Um, every day in the gym is an opportunity for us to get better, whether we're planning for a specific opponent or not. So um, just doing what we can, um, just controlling what we can control is just going to be the best way for us to move forward. Got to be able to roll with it, right? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Any other questions for Riley? Uh, Joe has one more. Yep, one more. Uh, you know, uh, the preseason ranks come out. You come out with eighth. Uh, any thoughts on what could transpire, hopefully getting to the tournament? You know, only eight teams make it. Uh, what's the thought on hopefully getting to a tournament, let alone being in it? Um, I think the fact that we were eighth after losing, losing so much um, talent in our senior class last year um, is pretty good pretty good because people don't know what we have coming up. So I think we're going to be able to surprise a lot of people, like coach said, with our young talent um, and just the change in our roles from the people that did like our returners from last year. So I think we're going to be able to surprise a lot of people and kind of be an underdog this year. All right, perfect. All right. Thank you, Riley. And then that'll conclude today's press conference. Thank you all for attending. Uh, if you need anything, uh, NIU women's basketball wise, be sure to contact me, Mike Hasse. Um, anything men's related, Jeremy Reed. Uh, again, a reminder, there will not be fans in the stands to start the season at the Convocation Center for NIU basketball. Um, and also be sure to check your email and our website for our media policies and procedures this year in terms of credentialing and the like. Uh, we hope to see you all covering NIU basketball this winter at the Convocation Center. Again, if you need anything else, be sure to reach out to myself and Jeremy Reed. Thank you all. Have a good day.